welcome everyone uh, welcome to the panel event on the role of custodians and exchanges in defi ecosystem we have a great number of uh, speakers in lineup before we move forward uh, i would like to take opportunity to uh, introduce you like block rocket what we are doing and who we are so so we are like block rocket uh, block rocket is an early stage startup accelerator and investor we are looking for like a seed investment into early stage and idea stage startup and we do like we hand pick five to 10 blockchain startup every year every year we invest up to 150000 euro into them in return of exchange of like uh, 2 to 5% equity normally the startup valuation goes to 1 to 5 million euro after the investment process we take them into our acceleration program which means like they get like matchmaking and marketing advisory and mentorship and uh, they can get all 360 degree help from our uh, partner network so block rocket is mostly focusing on blockchain ecosystem and we are mostly focusing on block uh, like a german based uh, ecosystem but startup outside of the uh, germany they can still apply for our acceleration program and investment program so this is the ecosystem so we are working same exactly like the, one of the biggest uh, like a startup accelerator of the world like y combinator plug and play and techstar but we are a little bit niche in terms of the blockchain so our main focus is blockchain and german ecosystem these are our numbers so what we did so far so we received like 200 plus applications so far we have like 50 plus startup in our shortlist we already executed our uh, startup investment into seven different startup we already invest up to uh, already up to like uh, 1 million euro we have like 250 plus partners they are located in dark region and around the world we have 30 plus vc partner in our network so our seed or idea says startups later on they goes to the seed uh, like the funding round they can they then we provide them like this massive uh, network of vc so they can interact with them and they can later on it will help them to raise the fund also apart from the funding and matchmaking and advisory we also organize every month like a monthly pitch event panel event to educate the mass these are our like uh, our th this is our ecosystem so you can see like we are uh, we are working closely with corporates law and advisory firm uh, infrastructure providers blockchain technology providers investors and vc and legal and also we are connected with several different blockchain media networks so this is the team of block rocket if you are a nerd if you are working from your garage and you are working on next big thing in the blockchain feel free to reach out to us or you can always go to our website www.blockrocket.io and you can apply through us and if you have some more question feel free to reach out to us we are also active on linkedin and twitter so you can follow us on there and uh, you can always keep up to date of yourself so this is basically from my side now moving further i would like to take opportunity to introduce our guest today so yeah let's start and as always like ladies first uh, I would like to introduce uh, Amy Lawrence from Ledger's B2B arm. And the Ledger is providing like Ledger Vault. Uh, I think she's working with the Ledger Vault more specifically. So Amy, stage is yours. Thanks so much and nice to be here, everyone. My name is Amy. I work for the B2B solution of Ledger, the security company, which is uh, Ledger Enterprise Solutions. And its main product is the Ledger Vault, which is here to secure your critical digital assets. Uh, we cater for institutions such as private banks, hedge funds, asset managers, and um, pretty much here to, to provide with a secure and a scalable solution, uh, which is compliant to, to all these actors on the B2B front. Thank you, Amy. Now, the next speaker is Laurent uh, from Societe Generale Security Services. So the Societe Generale is offering uh, several services for their, their clients into the core banking services and the security of the global custodian. Laurent, stage is yours. So good, good afternoon to all of you. I'm very pleased to be here today with you. So I'm Laurent Marocchini. I'm head of innovation for Societe Generale Security Services. I'm based in Luxembourg, so next to Germany of course, and uh, I'm also blockchain leader for Societe Generale, uh, Societe Generale Group. I'm also president of different associations in uh, Luxembourg, president of uh, the Blockchain and Crypto uh, Association, uh, ALFI, Association Luxembourgeoise des Fonds d'Investissement. I'm also vice president of uh, ABBL, so Bank and Bankers in, uh, in Luxembourg for the 
Innovation and FinTech uh, Association, and also president of the blockchain and crypto for the Lux Luxembourg House of Financial uh, Technology. So uh, I'm, work, I'm, I'm working for, for Sogen, and we are quite active in the space of blockchain, I would say since uh, 2014. Thanks a lot, Laurent. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Really looking forward to. Now, moving further, we have the next speaker as uh, Simon Peters. He's the managing director of uh, Dicus Network, and he's, uh, the Dicus is also one of our portfolio startups. Dicus is a company that bridging the gap between custodians and financial institutional. Uh, Simon, welcome to the, our panel. Please introduce. Thank you very much, Saga. Um, as Saga said, uh, my name is Sam Peters and I'm the managing director of Dicus Network. And what we're doing at Dicus is we're building a network of crypto custodians. And that is because we realized that um, working with a single custodian is not sufficient in any case. What we're trying to do is really building um, complex custody infrastructures with different kinds of wallets that work in, in very different kinds of, of uh, mechanisms and functions. Um, we absolutely, we believe we, we will come to a point where we have several custody systems running beside each other to ensure redundance, uh, to ensure security, um, but also just to, to optimize costs and, and spendings. And that's what we're working on uh, with Speakers Network. We are also a daughter company of Proxys Capital and very close to the Mikilbit GmbH. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. Uh, uh, moving further, our next speaker is Mark. Uh, he's a chief revenue officer at GK8. GK8 is a company who is providing like enterprise credit custody platform that enables like financial institutions to offer services or digital assets with 100% protection from cyber attacks. Welcome, Mark. Please introduce about yourself. Thank you. Nice. To, that was a great introduction. Yeah, you've introduced us well. So GK8 is a blockchain cybersecurity company. Uh, we offer financial institutions an end-to-end -end institutional grade platform for managing blockchain-based digital assets. Uh, we consist of a very sophisticated key management solution together with a complete wallet management infrastructure. Uh, what we specialize is we provide a true end-to-end -end solution. So it's geared for institutions that really don't have infrastructure in the blockchain space. So it incorporates a true air gap co-vault, which eliminates all the attack vectors. It's used for custody, plus a patented hot MPC solution, which is really used for high frequency transactions. Uh, and our, our MPC solution is handling thousands of messages per second, so it's a lot more than the average solutions that are out there. And of course, we provide endpoints for mobile and desktop applications and an API, which integrates with any of the existing solutions that are out there. Perfect. Thank you, Mark. Now, we have the last speaker, like Cyrus Faisal. He's the founder and CEO of Swissborg. Swissborg is a company which is listed on CoinMarketCap. He's uh, like top 100 Swissborg coin. And I think it's also the leading... Uh, uh, like fully licensed cryptocurrency wallet and exchange provider with over 100,000 downloads and secured by Curves MPC technology. Welcome, Cyrus. Please yeah, thanks so much. Uh, great introduction. I think so. We did do a little bit more than 100. I think so. Now we're at 400,000 uh, three months later, which is great. Um, yeah, well, you know, uh, Swissborg, you know, really the, our goal here, our mission is to democratize uh, crypto wealth management by making it fun, fair, and community centric, as you said. I invite all you guys to check out our Swissboard token, uh, which is the heart of our ecosystem, and obviously our app, which is an amazing app that enables people to onboard in a few seconds to some minutes to buy best digital assets, auto farm, so the whole DeFi thing uh, within the click of your fingers. Perfect. Thanks a lot. We Every month we try to bring uh, some of the unicorns from the blockchain space to our panel event. Last time we had like Chainlink and Polygon Network. This time it is Swissboard. So happy to have you here, uh, uh, Faisal. So Cyrus, uh, moving further, I would like to tell our audience that uh, please uh, check in the link below if you would like to ask some question to our speaker. They can uh, go to our LinkedIn page and they can write their questions and later on I will ask and I will take some questions from the audience as well as. So moving further, Cyrus, uh, first question for you is like, what is the difference between D5 and C5? What do you, what do you think? Yeah, I think so. That's a, a good question. And as uh, you know, <clears throat> If you only believe in CFI in the blockchain world, it's probably you're in the wrong business. Um, however, if you only believe in the DeFi, you probably are a bit too early, I would say. So I think so the, you know, the right combination of, of, of how the centralized world could bring speed, 
uh, could bring market regulators to, to validate what you're doing and more security. I think so that's one thing that's really good. And, and the decentralized world is what we're all aiming at and how we could eventually create more than a peer-to-peer -peer culture, but really create a, a, a world economy which is all driven uh, by this decentralized world. And I think so, you know, at Swiss World, we're always trying to get the best of those two worlds is how, you know, with our meta exchange, because we're not an exchange, we're a meta exchange, uh, means we, we're on top of exchange, like Skyscanner, if you want, we aggregate all these different order books from the best exchanges and people could buy at best rates through these uh, uh, different uh, aggregation, or aggregated order books. And, and how we could offer essentially uh, DeFi uh, and then DeFi was DeFi. For those who don't know, you know, it's been now in the business for a long time, but really it's only a year that it, it has been taken off from a few billion dollars to now like, I don't know, $150 billion, I think so it's pledged between the three main protocols, which is Ethereum, uh, 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 Binance Smart Chain and Polygon. And, uh, and, and the idea of the DeFi world is really how can someone uh, start exchanging uh, uh, essentially on these different decentralized exchanges, how could people lend and borrow and earn a yield based on that? And this is where the whole yield farming has been uh, going crazy for the last, I would say, uh, almost a year now. And, uh, and going forward is, again, how any application that we have in the current financial system, how can we apply it on a decentralized matter where, again, we are all not, uh, you know, putting all our eggs onto one counterparty risk, but we're all, we're all exchanging it through different protocols uh, that are built, again, on Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, Polygon, and how these decentralized applications and protocols can enable us to, uh, to empower any citizen around the world. Perfect. Thanks a lot, uh, Cyrus. Moving further, as our panel limit is more focused on DeFi and in general custodians, so the next question goes to Mark. Uh, before we move to the security side, I would say like, how can the custodian leverage the DeFi space? So as a custodian, right, the, way we see, the way we see a bank or any financial institution, they need to start with a custodian solution, which is an offline solution that's handling the bulk of their assets. Well, they need a high frequency type of an MPC type of solution, a hot wallet, which will support both their DeFi and staking capabilities. But as Cyrus mentioned, I mean, the space right now it's not only about just storing your assets, but how are, you, how, how are institutions and how are customers going to make money out of those assets? And of course, the DeFi world, I mean, the protocols are, um, are popping up on right and left every day. So the need to have a solution that can support uh, both the custodian aspect of it, but also the trading side of it for DeFi and staking is, is, is very, very, very important. Perfect. Thank you, Mark. Uh, moving further, Simon, uh, my next question to you is like, what are the current, like uh, some sort of main crypto custody solutions available in the market? So we can make a, a broad matrix, basically, if we look at uh, crypto custody. So of course we have, uh, we have to first to understand the difference between a self custody wallet and a custodial wallet um, from, from itself. And then of course the, the underlying technologies, I think the, the most, most common terms thrown around uh, is the HSM, the hardware security module, which is a, which is a, which is a server module that uses real, real entropy to uh, generate random numbers and thereby can encrypt keys and protect them. And then of course there's the MPC, the multi-party computing, in which uh, the private key is split in uh, several parts of a key and then um, spread around uh, to different parties. And only then when when these parties come together, um, we have a we have a we have the key and a, and a transaction can be signed or executed. And then, of course, we have these, these words as pod and cold storage. And is it connected to the internet or isn't it connected to the internet? But, you know, it's very hard to say what is all out there because I just gave you a lot of random terms, but you can combine them in, in very different uh, ways. And, and one example that I, that I really cherish is, for example, what, our, what Mark, my, my co-speaker, did with, uh, with, with their solution because they combined um, uh, a few different levels. Um, and I think this, this is really what, what we are on here. We have a, we have plenty of mechanisms that we can deploy, but it really matters 
how you combine them. You cannot say that an HSM is better than an MPC because it really comes down to what is the entry end process here? How is the, how, how is the key created? How is it stored? Um, how is the transaction signed? And how is, uh, how is the key recovery? And of course, an HSM or an MPC can now you know, help you with one or the other uh, part of that process, but it, it's really about uh, all these different sections of the, of the custodial effort of securing the private keys and the assets on the blockchain, are they secure or not? Yes. Thank you. My next question goes to the Laurent. Uh, Laurent, what uh, Societe Generale is doing in blockchain space and crypto space in general? So uh, a lot of things, I would say. So uh, we, we have made more than 40 um, experimentation as a whole since uh, 2014. So we started to be uh, one of the top 10 investors in uh, Earth Recorder. So it was beginning in, uh, of uh, 2014. And now we have identified uh, five sectors where we believe that blockchain will make sense and where we have uh, a lot of projects. So the first one is the uh, trade finance. So uh, trade finance, we are live with uh, Comgo, we are live with uh, WeTrade, for example. <laughs> Some uh, very interesting uh, initiatives. Uh, I would say that um, the trade finance is a sector very interesting for blockchain because you have uh, the traceability, the supply chain, you have a lot of stakeholders and still a lot of paper where uh, finally blockchain will be a, a solution to dematerialize, dematerialize a lot of things. The so second sector uh, is uh, digital identity. So why to do a KYC, whereas a bank has made the same KYC. So it, it, it's an opportunity to exchange the, the KYC on a secure manner. Also in, term, in terms of uh, payment, it's a, an interesting sector uh, for, for blockchain. So uh, to improve the infrastructure, but now with the CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currency, stable coins, so we have made experimentation with uh, of the France, it was uh, two, three years ago. Uh, we have helped uh, the, the group uh, Casino to issue a stable coin. It was two months ago. It has been done in a public blockchain. So uh, uh, it was done in, uh, in France. After a very interesting sector where we believe it will make sense is the sector of the post trade. And this is where uh, the custodian has a role to play. So we have uh, an internal startup, Societe Generale Forge, that has been created, uh, so it is two years ago, where we have issued uh, a, a bond in a public blockchain of 100 million, it was two years ago. Uh, last year, we have issued a bond of 40 million uh, with Banque de France in a DVP. So it was uh, last year. We have uh, issued a, certific a, pro a certificate product. And uh, last month, we have made an operation with uh, EIB and uh, Banque de France, Goldman Sachs and Santander. So definitely uh, it's a key topic for us. So we use this uh, internal startup now as a tokenization platform for Societe Generale, but also we are quite active with uh, Paxos in US. We are live for the post trade in, uh, in US and we are also investor and part of different initiatives in the post trade sector as a whole. And uh, last part is the insurance where uh, we have some interesting uh, use cases thanks to the smart contract. So definitely the five sectors where we believe that blockchain will make sense and very active with uh, Societe Generale Forge for tokenization of security. Perfect. Thank you, Lauren. My next question goes to Emmy, as uh, Emmy is from the ledger, but B2B are, but uh, I think it is also like a non-custodian uh, thing. Uh, so Emmy, the question is like, we are now in the phase of institutional adoption. How Ledger Vault is contributing to the bringing the industry forward? Yeah, thanks for the question. Absolutely, we are not a custodian. So as in we allow the custodians to, to be um, the custodians of the assets. So we allow them with the technology we provide. And um, basically Ledger has been around for a while on the B2C arm and has been here um, to provide with security for um, the consumers. And these products have been battle tested, like millions of people on the globe are using these products. And on the B2B, we are using the same operating system, uh, which is combined software and hardware in order to, to just allow these institutions who use the vault uh, to have a peace of mind. Um, and, you know, there is this 
trilemma in, in crypto custody, which is the compliance, the security, and the scalability. And with the vault, um, we just uh, provide um, a response to all these three uh, pain points. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, moving further, uh, shortly we'll take also the one of the poll and we'll ask the community member, but I would like to still take uh, one more round of questions and then we'll uh, open up the polling round. So going further, Cyrus, my next question goes to you. Uh, so I was looking after your website and uh, I found the word like a new era of wealth management. What do you mean by that? And what is the Swiss fork is doing in terms of T5? Yeah, um, that's a good question which is very hard to answer, but I'll try to go for it. I mean, what is the new era of wealth management? Um, you know, if we look at now, or we look at in two years, it's gonna change a lot. And what we've seen is that wealth, as it has been portrayed, is being changing constantly, right? It used to be land, then it used to be uh, commodities, and eventually events to be, I mean, it was in gold before that, and then eventually started to be, financial area came in and, you know, it was more about uh, money and then eventually money came to stocks and, and today it's data. Uh, people don't realize it, but it's data and whatever that data is, it could be your Facebook data, it could be your Bitcoin, all of this is data, right? And, um, and, and how we portray this is, you know, going forward is how essentially your own data could be part of your wealth and, and, and that could again be your regular Bitcoins or Swiss board tokens, but it could be maybe going forward your NFTs. It could be uh, whatever you believe that is essentially part of that wealth. And I think so that's the, the big thing that we have behind is, uh, you know, what you need to know and what you have, how do you really do build wealth is if it's profitable, if you like the product and you use it, and if you're, okay with the philosophy behind it. And, and I think so, if you align those three Ps, well, most probably you're gonna be very successful. And that's what most entrepreneurs, most you know, very successful people will have is that they, they build their wealth with things that they knew, know well, but more importantly, they stand for. And, um, and, and what are we doing in DeFi today? I think so, there's m multiple chapters. Um, you know, uh, we offer yields on essentially on different tokens, there's a Bitcoin, Ethereum, USDC, um, and as well as Swiss board token itself. Uh, how, how do we do that? Essentially is that you pledge your tokens for 24 hour basis minimum, and then we scan essentially the whole, not, not we personally, but our Oracle scans essentially all the different decentralized liquidity pools and invests into these ones. And you essentially do order farming within a few clicks and without taking the operational risk and the whole the whole maneuver of doing this and all the gas price and all of that. And that's how we, we take a, we really do that within a few clicks. And, and of course, we're working on different decentralized protocols and things that, you know, we, we would like to offer in, in the longer run. Because as I said on earlier, is that uh, I think so we now have a big presence in the centralized distributed world, but going forward, if you believe in blockchain, you have to eventually lead to more decentralization. And that's what we hope to uh, bring in the upcoming uh, months and years. Perfect. Thank you, Cyrus. Uh, my, moving further, my next question goes to Mark. Mark, why do we need custodians? I mean, I can buy as a, as a, as a who needs a custodian first of all, and why do we need a custodian? And what are the authentication and transaction safeguards employed by the custodians? So, I mean, I think you can, you can ask the guy that's uh, somewhere in Germany who has, I think, one or two more passwords left to, uh, to, give, to remove his Bitcoin um, as to uh, why he potentially needs a custodian. I mean, the fact of the matter is uh, a regulated entity, a custodian that's actually a regulated entity that has everything from insurance around, uh, around their own solution has proper security, all right? This is, I'm not talking about, and no offense to any of the B2C products, when we're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars of assets, the need for proper security because the state level hackers are getting much more involved now. The stakes are much, much higher. And the need to have everything from, uh, from regulation side, so we work with the BAFIN, we work with the SEC and the OCC, with FINMA, in order to comply with the regulations that they require, uh, 
Uh, and, and some of that is, is constantly moving. Uh, but the need to also have proper insurance. I mean, we have the largest insurance policy in the market today, which is $500 million per vault of ours, um, uh, is really required because, again, the assets have grown to an extent where you need to have a regulated body the same way you don't keep your cash uh, at home in a mattress uh, anymore. You need to actually have proper security and proper uh, infrastructure in place to support a digital infrastructure. Because again, we're not even talking about just crypto assets. Uh, the, the, token, the role of tokenization of bonds and equities, which we're involved with a lot of the projects that are going on in the world, uh, the, entire, the entire market is going towards blockchain. And, and the need for proper security in and around it is, is paramount. Perfect. Thank you, Mark. The question was asked by uh, intentionally because like lots of people think like uh, what is custodian when we use like a heavy vocabulary. So thanks a lot uh, for the answer. Moving further, uh, Simon, my question next to you is like uh, several actions have, have already been hacked in the past, right? Do you see the risk of financial institution falling into the same trap? If so, how come and what can they do to prevent such attacks again? Thank you, Tara. I think this is a really excellent question. And I think uh, many institutions are, are quite not contemplating that. And I think this is also the crossroad uh, that we're heading. And I, I think this is why custody is, is one of the most fundamental topics in crypto. Because I think there, there, there are two routes ahead of us. Um, there's one route in which we have a, a broad adoption in which cryptocurrencies will be adopted by banks. And there's a second route in which that doesn't happen. But what will be adopted is such things as security tokens. If you look, for example, at the ERC 140 uh, and, uh, uh, 140 standard and, and all the other security tokens, the ERC tokens that are, are around that and the umbrella are very similar to that, you actually see a token where that has a, a governance structure and um, a compliance structure that is, that is not within the custodian that protects the, 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 um, the private keys, but in the operator of the smart contracts. And, you know, especially when we look at things like whitelisting, you know, then we move into an asset class that simply cannot be stolen, you know, like because, or very hardly, it rather be lost, it is rather lost than stolen because if I, if I, if I need a whitelisted address with a KYC process behind it to, uh, you know, to exchange my asset against, against cash, you know, then this asset is basically has no value, even if I, if I would steal it. So, I think this is really the big questions uh, that, is, that have been asked in behind closed doors in many big banks and, and I think also with the central banks. Um, what kind of adoption do we actually like? And I think if we go and in the latter case that I was describing, I'm, I'm thinking, um, I'm sure a few panelists sitting beside me have also thought about that. Um, I think, no, then if that latter happens, no, then, then it will not happen. Then we won't see uh, a single breach, but, or very, very early, but on the other hand, if we see a broad adoption in which almost all banks in the world finally will hold Bitcoin and almost everybody will have uh, cryptocurrencies, um, then I see, yes, yes, I will. Then in that case, we will see breaches also with larger financial institutions, um, simply because if that becomes the case, then breaking into a cryptocurrency custodian is the most lucrative business in the world. And in that case, we ought to fortify our custody much more than I think people are currently contemplating, you know, because in that case, it's not a few hackers, right? Like in that case, it, it might see adverse governments taking action. We might see real large con criminal conglomerates taking action. So to summarize it, maybe it depends on what kind of adoption we're going to see in three to four years. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. Uh, next question goes to Laurent. Uh, how do you see the DeFi for financial services and capital markets? Yeah, uh, j j just I will just tell you a story. Uh, indeed, um, in my life, I have been hacked uh, three times. Uh, uh, one time in uh, Morocco, one time in US, and uh, one time in UK. I have been always uh, paid, by, paid, by, uh, paid back by my bank. So it was uh, a good news to be uh, in a bank. Uh, in uh, 2015, I have received uh, some uh, some coins uh, in a wallet. Uh, I have forgotten to put the password, and uh, there has been an upgrade of the wallet. The wallet is not uh, available anymore, and I have lost all the coin. And I, I want I, I would love to have a custodian bank uh, in a in a digital world. I, I would say, and this is where 
uh, we have the value added of the, the custodian also in a, in a digital world. So now if we go back to the DeFi and the CeFi, so we have, we have received a kind of uh, explanation of the difference of the CeFi and the DeFi. What is very important for a bank is the regulation. We need to comply with the regulation. We have no choice. And uh, when you are talking about DeFi, it's decentralized. It's, it's not regulated. So I do not believe that uh, in the future, you will have a, a lot of involvement of the financial industry in a, in a DeFi world. We will be part of the ecosystem. We will have a role to play, but anyway, we will not be very, very active in a, in a DeFi world. In a, in a short, medium term, in the long term, we will never know. In the CFI, it's a bit different because now we see the regulation is coming. We are all waiting for Mika in, um, in, in Europe. It's very important for, for us. And I believe that uh, in a CFI world, we can find some uh, use cases and way to, to collaborate uh, in the future. So definitely regulation for a financial industry will be uh, a key point and we see that uh, now we see more um, institutional investors coming in the market. It's a question of time, but definitely uh, yes, if it is in a regulated way. Thank you, Laurent. My next question goes to Emmy. Uh, Emmy, how do you see the innovation cycle in crypto custody compared with the other tech industries like faster, slower, about the same and why? Um, happy to, to answer to that one, but I just want to say to what Lauren added that in the second case when you were hacked for the second time in your life um, with with that software, what I believe it was software, right? And you weren't self custodying because just I want to remind you all, we shouldn't forget that, that the, the DNA, DNA of crypto is to self custody or to be able to self custody if you wish so. So um, I guess you didn't have your seed phrase. Uh, that's why that's why you lost um these coins back then and i hope they were not uh, a great number of coins i hope it was not bitcoin because that's my favorite coin but um to to tail into or to to reflect your questions Zagar. so innovation cycles are just pretty mad um because i mean much much more quicker than what we see in traditional markets and especially if it happens during um a bull market just like so many new features are happening and they're coming out and and you need to be sure that you innovate and you respond to these requirements but you should never compromise security and there are not so many actors in the space which have been able to innovate in the bear market as well so with all these new protocols emerging pretty much every other day and new projects coming out I feel like, um, yeah, it's just, that's why, that's why we all love this field because so much is happening and it's exciting, but, but yeah, security is not something what, um, what you should compromise at any, um, at any point or at any point based on any matter. So you are saying not your keys, not your coins, right? Yeah, that's true. I think if you wish to self custody, you have to have the tools for that and and uh, be uh, be an individual or be an institution. You know, like with the ledger uh, B two B solution, the ledger what you can give one of the one of the shared secret to you know to your lawyers, who then will be to some extent your custodians. But it should not; they should not be the ultimate. Uh, decisive um, players to to send a transaction or not. I mean, they, they are not the owners of the keys, right? Or should not be, in my view. Sure. So my counter question for you is like, do you have any advice for found, uh, financial institutions to stay on the top of this innovation pressure? Yeah, I think um, just, you know, need to, need to be very honest with themselves and then just, um, basically not build in-house, but buy a third party solution. Uh, because if you compare CapEx and OPEX and, and yeah, pretty much how many developers you need to, to build something decent, um, you're just like wasting your time, I think. So definitely there are a lot of um, good security 
companies out there who provide with uh, with um, infrastructure what you can use and and you can uh, quickly implement. Perfect. Uh, thanks a lot, Amy, for the answer. And uh, this is the poll, a uh, little bit poll for the, our uh, participants and audience. Uh, this is the uh, like: Have you already used any DeFi wallet before or, or traded token on Uniswap? So I can see like they are voting. So uh, continue voting, guys, please. And uh, moving further, I uh, a colleague of mine just posted in chat like a uh, link for the LinkedIn, WhatsApp, and Telegram. If you have some question, please feel free to go there and ask the question, and I will definitely take one or two questions for our speaker. Uh, moving further, I have the next question for Cyrus. And my question is, please tell us more about the whole investment experience at Swiss Borg. And you say like, uh, I said like about uh, the application download was like 100,000 and now it's 400,000. Where do we see the whole space is heading or is it already the top? Oh, it's definitely not the top. Uh, I think so. You, we're, you know, are we going to go see Bitcoin at 200,000 in two months? I have no clue, but, but definitely it's still a very early stage. Um, you know, a lot of people have heard about crypto. Uh, very people have invested in crypto and pretty much no one is using crypto. Uh, that, that's the real case. Uh, you know, we're a very few amount of people in the world that actually do use crypto. Uh, and when I do mean reuse crypto, it's mean you're sending crypto, you're receiving crypto as a payment, you're doing DeFi, you're doing all that. It's not something. Um, and I think so uh, it's normal because, sorry, Emmy, I uh, really like you very much, but I, 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 I'm not 100% sure that everyone needs their keys. I, I think that most people, that's where I'm more on, on with, uh, with Laurent and the others is that, you know, my mom, if you give her private keys, I mean, I reinstall her phone every day or every week or every month or so. If if my mom is telling me, hey, mom, here, this is a private key. I know what she's going to do. She's going to, she's going to like put it on her, on her, you know, first picture and she'll have it on her phone. Right. And, and I think so that's the case, not only my mom, but probably of 85% of the planet and, uh, or more that just don't want private keys. Um, so I think so. There is a lot of applications that have centralized authority, and and, and it's good for some of these people. I think so in, in general. Um, I, I do believe that you know uh, I don't know exactly uh, what the whole technology be, be behind uh, the GUS and as well GKA, but the the MPC technology is something that we strongly believe at Swissborg. Uh, I think so. It's the most secure part of 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 not holding private keys, but actually computing them and and uh, and uh, making sure that you're relied on technology uh, in, in general. Um, so yeah, how do you provide a good investment experience? Uh, well, first you need a lot of education, what we're doing right now, right? Uh, then you have to make it as fun as possible because you know people want to have fun uh, even more today, right? You, if you, if you have this boring uh, banking app that say, hey, uh, do a KYC is going to take you like five months, you know, after one, after five minutes, someone drops. Most people do drop. And even if the people do their KYC, that doesn't mean that they're going to activate their accounts, right? Because it has, everything has to be within clicks and, 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 and that has to be done. So if, if you have an onboarding part that's going to take you more than five minutes, there's a very strong chances you're out of business in the next five years. Uh, and, and, and then you have to make it as fun as possible because people uh, need that to essentially to get re you know, reinsurance, right? And then start to get that, you know, when crypto goes up, everyone's happy. When crypto goes down, like everyone's like trying to say, oh, it was a scam and all that. So I think so, you know, what we at least try to do at Swissborg is that we really try to make it as, as easy as possible to, to onboard, but then to discover new products, the marketplace, something really working on. If you want to get into DeFi, as I said earlier, just have one click. Uh, you know, if you want to look at videos, if you want to start trading a little bit more, you don't just need like 10,000 graphs. You just say, oh, is it good time or bad timing? And data will tell you. And that's, that's providing an... And I think so going forward, what you want is to bring that Spotify experience. DeFi today, it's a little bit like Napster. It's really complicated, sucks. Uh, 
However, the mindset, the philosophy is the best thing you could ever get. And that goes at the essence of Bitcoin itself. But the experience is still very painful in, in most cases, and it's, it's very dangerous for most people to go into DeFi. Um, but I think so that's what we're trying to do is, is there was Napster and this is what's happening on, on a lot of blockchain applications. And we are going to get to Napster, we're going to get to Spotify. And, uh, and the good thing is that, you know, if we're building the Spotify, we're not building it with VCs. We're building it with every person of our community. And I think so that is the biggest thing about most blockchains companies or blockchains ecosystem in DEOs is how to really essentially build this thing with your community. And that's why people have governance tokens and have different membership tokens and this and that is how people could get empowered, build together and create a better experience in whatever industry you feel like in, in, in crypto. Thank you, Cyrus. Uh, my next question goes to Mark. Uh, there are like lots of inflow of institutional money into the digital asset space. How can the custodians fulfill the upcoming demand? Do we have enough infrastructure ready for that? So I'll going to touch on that question just one minute. I just want to touch on what Cyrus mentioned, if you don't mind, uh, with regard sure. to the MPC solution. Well, uh, because I think that's, that's an area where people are, I'm, I'm not going to use the word falling asleep at the wheel a little bit, MPC technology is a great technology, multi-party computation. The problem is the standard MPC solutions have two out of three cosigners. And it's very similar to multi-sig technology where, again, it's a hot wallet. You can't eliminate the risk and you can mitigate the risk. So the need to have, you do have a need for an MPC. MPC is an excellent technology. You need to have that. Uh, so our MPC algorithm is quite different. It has a large, we can actually have dozens of cosigners. These are automated cosigners uh, in the cloud. But you also have to keep the bulk of your money offline. All right. Now, yes, in the DeFi world, you have to keep your money going all times, but using, using a cold vault that actually does cold staking and the ability to send directly to smart contracts using a, a cold vault is a lot more secure. And, and that's why a lot of the banks that are just looking at using standard MPC, it's not sufficient enough. It's something that needs to be, uh, it, it needs to have a place in the marketplace, but you also need to have cold together with it. Now, to your question regarding the institutional side of the business, um, if you look at the traditional banking world, in order for institutional money to come in, you really need to have a concept of prime brokerage, all right? And that's something that really doesn't exist today in the crypto space. I know there are companies that are trying to get there and they're talking about having it, but it's not your typical prime brokerage model that you have in foreign exchange or in other asset classes. And in order for institutional money to really come into the space, there's no doubt that the prime broker or the credit facilities have to come into place in order to facilitate real trading. Perfect. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Cyrus, do you, do you also say some words on Mark's point of view? Sorry. Uh, no, I mean, I, I do agree. Uh, the MPC technology is something new. Uh, a lot of people are starting to use it. Uh, people have different solutions, I think so. Um, I'm not here to say which one's the best. Uh, I just know that the one we're using has been acquired by PayPal, so... <laughs> We have to add more, uh, more of them right now. So um, yeah, there's there's a lot of different solutions. A lot of people, uh, is that the best solution in the world? MPC technology. Well, we feel more comfortable with that one. Uh, and maybe you know other people have for different reasons. Uh, think that you know HSM. It's it's better to to go on hardware. Uh, that's the best thing possible. Uh, we believe in software. So. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Cyrus. Uh, next question goes to Simon. Simon, to what degree is a crypto custodian different to the traditional custodian? Thank you, Saga. Yeah, that's also a very interesting question because to answer that, we have to first understand what, what was a custodian in a traditional system. And of course, the custodian back, uh, or still, they're still existing, right? Um, the way, of course, you know, just physically guarding the assets, you know, just physically guarding your stock certificate. But uh, we're also doing something that is called um, uh, depository services. So this is just an administrative service or um, controlling services. And um, as the custodian uh, on your know, is that we as crypto custodians have nothing to do with administrative services about the coins in itself. Um, when you see a, a security token, for example, all these things are put into the smart contract now. So now you have, uh, you have a split of roles 
really. You have this uh, depository services being being really moved into the smart contract and uh, the safeguarding is moved into the crypto custody um, providers. And that is interesting because you have now this, this one role, um, the, the traditional custody, which is, you know, which is a business model for, for major players in the financial world, right? And um, now we, we see this split coming across into, into two. Uh, and now it also becomes sometimes interesting when we define custody because um, no one or most people wouldn't associate a, associate a smart contract with a custodian. But if we, are, if we look into the details, a smart contract is, is, could be also categorized at some, uh, to some, some extent as a, as a custodian because they do these services if we have an ERC-140 standard uh, or similar. So yes, it, we have this one rule that has now become at least two rules and um, as, as innovation pressure continues, maybe it gets even further fractured. You're, you're muted. Yeah, sorry. Thank you, Simon. Uh, my next question goes to Laurent. Uh, Laurent, uh, there are like two types of uh, assets right now in the blockchain space, like a security token offering and crypto assets. Where do you see more appetite for the financial industry? Uh, I see an appetite for for the crypto uh, for the crypto asset for the U.S. players uh, mainly because if you are uh, if you are looking to uh, BlackRock, uh, Fidelity, uh, you have seen MicroStrategy as a corporate, uh, Tesla as a corporate. So we see uh, in U.S. they have a clear appetite on uh, on the crypto asset. Whereas in Europe, uh, if you are looking to the main asset manager, they are looking for the regulation MICA, as I said, in, uh, in Europe to move forward in the crypto asset. But the, we see a lot of interesting projects regarding the tokenization of assets or so security token, because it is uh, very well suited to the regulation. And uh, this is where uh, in Societe Generale, we, we, we do the bet to move forward in the security token uh, offering with our tokenization platform. But it's not only Societe Generale, we see a lot of uh, European player uh, trying to tokenize the equity. We have seen that in, uh, in, uh, in Switzerland, in, uh, in Berlin, in uh, Paris, Luxembourg, and UK. We have seen tokenization of, uh, of real estate, a lot of uh, topics around the tokenization of real estate in Europe, uh, bonds, uh, and funds, if you are looking to the tokenization of funds, uh, it's definitely a, a very interesting uh, topic as a security token. Uh, we have in Luxembourg uh, funds DLT, we have business in France, we have um, fund admin chain in UK. So we see in Europe a very uh, clear interest about the security token compared to US, whereas they, I would say for the, firm, for the moment, they are very uh, focused on, uh, on the crypto asset. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, my next question goes to Emmy. What advice would you give to those looking for custody solution? And also the another additional question, like what do you think we, the, as a blockchain space is heading towards? Like the overall blockchain space, that's quite a wide question. Um, well, like this past um, Buaron has, uh, has been pretty much about uh, institutions, finally arriving and uh, and and also a lot of companies put uh, bitcoin and, and similar cryptocurrencies uh, on their treasury which is which is fantastic and they need uh, sufficient technology in order to to secure these assets and also really important to have a decent recovery um, schemes implemented um, to answer to your to your earlier question which was that what would be my advice for someone who's looking for a crypto custody infrastructure? I want to highlight three things. Uh, basically, that security is is, is the number one thing. Uh, interoperability, of course, because it's important that the um, current infrastructure you have can um, communicate and can be tied into um, into the uh, crypto um, tool or, or crypto management. Um, or treasury management tool for cryptos, right? And also usability. It's really important that um, some of the employees of that company which is going to use your system, they don't have a 
a hard time figuring out how they create various approval groups or various condition flows. Um, it has to be intuitive. And um, maybe um, the most important of all is to keep in mind that not every solution out there is, is an answer for the same question, such as um, a quad wallet solution is, is like not um, necessarily able to, to um, um, cater for, for your needs where you also want to have a high frequency trading and vice versa that the best solution out there like MPC for instance for um, high frequency trading as in when you want to send multiple transactions at times maybe it's not um, the most well equipped for, um, for a hot or a warm uh, request. So I think like understanding that, that, that what is what differentiates all the solutions out there and understanding that what is what you want to build as an institution, what is what you want to provide for your clients is, is critical. Thank you, Amy. I think moving further, we are like running out of time. We only have nine minutes left. So I would like to take one question from audience. And we have a question from Thibs. How do you see the blockchain and especially Bitcoin going forward with the massively growing SG concerns? What would it take for a custodian to influence to end of the proof of work era? I mean, um, who would like to answer? I can, wow. I can answer, I can answer for, for, for the influence of the proof of work. So indeed, we see uh, that uh, it's not normal to have such a consumption for, uh, for Bitcoin. So we have a lot of debate uh, regarding uh, the energy consumption of uh, Bitcoin, equivalent of the consumption of a country like uh, Romania, or, but uh, okay. Uh, regarding the influence of the, of the custodian, uh, I, I believe that uh, now we work more and more in terms of uh, custodian. We, we work more and more with uh, alternative um, blockchain. So I know that Ethereum is still proof of work and they need to, uh, to migrate uh, one day. Uh, we work, for example, in Societe Generale with Tezos, with, uh, which is an interesting uh, blockchain and we, that, uh, that is more fast and uh, with uh, less uh, electronic uh, consumption. So uh, definitely it's part of our analysis now uh, when we use a blockchain to see the consumption. After, yeah, uh, it's definitely uh, for me a, a question of time for, uh, for Bitcoin. And ESG is definitely part of all our decision tree now uh, for the financial industry. Thank you, Laura. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mark or Simon. yeah, just a second. What what Laurent mentioned, I think, and it goes towards also what Emmy mentioned earlier. I think uh, what's important here is um, to be flexible with regard to the type of blockchain you're working on. So yes, there are use cases where Ethereum, Bitcoin, runs, but we work with Tezos, we work with Stellar, we work with Hedera. You need to have a solution that's going to fit the needs based on based on the specific use case. And I mean, we're working with banks that have. 25, 30 different use cases in and around blockchain, whether it be payments, whether it be tokenization, whether it be crypto. And there are areas that private blockchain come into play. Um, and of course, uh, the public blockchain as well. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Cyrus, would you like to add some? Uh, yeah, I think so. It, it definitely is very important. That actually, tonight um, I do videos every Tuesday, and I was talking about this last Tuesday and this Tuesday too. We're, we're part of a really cool thing going on that the founders of VWT, if people don't know what VWT is, Energy Web Token, great project out of Switzerland in the US. Um, and um, we have uh, been, we're part and we're creator of the CCA, it's the Crypto Climate Accord, which the idea is that by 2025, we wanna make uh, crypto cl uh, clean and crypto green. So um, I think so, obviously Proof of Stake was gonna eliminate this, but we need for sure to, emphasize on the fact that, um, yeah, miners uh, should go green. And, uh, and if we want to arrive to mass adoption and we want to use the blockchain with this real purpose, if it's only for a store of value, maybe not have too much transactions, maybe, you know, we could stay as we are. But if you really want to make this 
and have all these video games that are plugged with NFTs and all of that, we definitely need to grow uh, green and have new these different protocols. So uh, Swiss Borg, we're now looking at different ways how we could off offset these different carbon emissions and hopefully um, make the world uh, happy with uh, green, green club crypto. Looking forward to. Thanks a lot, Cyrus. Maybe, maybe Zagar, just if I may, because I can't um, speak uh, enough about this website um, as, uh, as someone who really believes that Bitcoin um, mining is actually representing a great opportunity to reshuffle and reset the energy mix of the world. And I think Alex, uh, Alexandra Din asked this question, uh, just like a good, a good resource is uh, Bitcoin will not boil the ocean uh, dot com. If you check that out, you find a really important and valuable research uh, to, to your question. Thank you. Maybe, Amy, if you can uh, also uh, like copy paste that link in chat box below so all our audience can access it. Uh, moving further, uh, there's the next question for Laurent. But before I ask the question to Laurent, I would like to ask all of our speakers to share their LinkedIn or Twitter profile. So if any of the, our audience want to keep in touch with you or if they want to follow you, so they can always uh, like uh, keep up to date with what you guys are doing to build the strong ecosystem in blockchain tech. Uh, before I move further to the next question, Simon, if you would like to add some uh, one or two sentences on this uh, whole blockchain mining thing. Well, I think the, the most important things have been already said, but I, I, I think I would only highlight the urgency, right? Like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see quite some some social changes in the next years. I, um, I'm sure Germany will get a new government. Um, and in all these things, you know, like they, they simply know not like the future is limited if it's not green, you know, so that is it needs to get green. And that is an imperative. So we will need we will move that definitely. Perfect. Thanks a lot for raising lots of questions on green awareness, sustainability, and blockchain. And that's why we have, we are coming up with a great lineup of speaker next month for the we have our panel event discussion on the topic of like sustainability and blockchain. I will shortly share the link. But before I would like to take the question from Jigar, uh, he asked to the Lawrence, as you said, Society General is developing product for five sectors. His question is, how many products have you developed and in which market are you currently focused on? And where can I read about your products in detail? Just send me a message on LinkedIn <laughs> and then we'll answer. But uh, indeed, we have defined the five sectors where we believe that blockchain will make sense. After we use blockchain to improve, uh, to improve our process, to deliver better customer experience and so on, we do not have a, a pure product uh, with a list, a catalog of products that uh, that we can have but in the trade finance for example uh, we we can uh, we can use a blockchain for for the trade finance so it's definitely a, a kind of product and for the tokenization uh, if you are a, a, an investor if you want to issue a bond if you want to issue a certificate product you can use our uh, société générale forge platform by the way uh, you will not go in internet and uh, issue directly a bond but anyway, uh, we can get in touch uh, to, to discuss about that. But it's not, it's not really a question of uh, how many products do we have. It's a question of uh, use cases to improve efficiency, deliver customer experience, and also to move from a paper world to an electronic world and after to a digital world. And to, to better serve the client and to be, uh, to be green in, uh, in, the, in the future. Thanks a lot, Laurent. Uh, so here I'm just trying to share my screen for the next panel event. So in, in meanwhile, I would like to thank all of our speakers for taking the time and coming on our panel event. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, and thanks a lot from the team Block Rocket. Thank you for joining us once again. And we are looking forward to have you once again on our panel event in near future. Uh, before I end this event, then I would like to also thank, uh, as always, our event partner, Disrupt Network. Also, our media partner, BTC Eco and Be in Crypto. Thank you guys for your marketing help. And as I said, like next month, the panel event topic is like sustainability in blockchain. I just uh, uh, copy, copy the link in chat below. You can already, you can start registering with the, uh, on your event, right? And then looking forward to have you on next 16th June on sustainability in blockchain event. So we already have like three speakers confirmed and two more will be like announced soon. So you can always follow on LinkedIn and check our updates. 
till then i wish you a nice evening thanks a lot once again and uh, see you next time thank you guys thank you bye bye thank you everyone thank you so much great to see everyone bye 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 bye, -bye.